Okay, so uh, looking here at uh, a summary of working with stem and leaf diagrams and the kind of uh, questions they ask you at GCSE exams. Um, so here we've got a um, stem and leaf diagram that's called a back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagram. It's showing you two sets of data in the one diagram. So it's about um, heart rates in a particular test. So this was the heart rate before they did the test of walking on stairs. Then this was the heart rate um, after they uh, walked up the stairs. And the way that you'd be very careful with these stomach diagrams is to always make sure they've got a key to tell you what's going on. So this side, the afters, uh, if I took this number here for a moment, I'm going to say, then that number is going to be 88, because this is representing tens, and it's telling you it's going to be 88. So that number there would be 88. And we've got to be careful, because when we come this way, um, the stem leaf diagrams must always be working to increase, so 58, 59, 60, 61, 64. So we've got to remember that we're coming increase in this direction. So this value here, for our sake, is going to be 76. So we've just got to be careful how we interpret these diagrams. So the question says, uh, compare the heart rates of the people before they walk up the stairs uh, with the heart rates after they walked up the stairs. So compare, and we've got data, and that means that we've got to compare an average. So we compare an average and a range. Now sometimes it depends on the data. Um, there are lots of different types of averages and there's lots of types of different ranges. So for a stem and leaf diagram, um, the ordinary range would be fine. So that's your maximum value minus your minimum value. And the average that we could use, well, we've got a choice of the mode average, the median average, or the mean average. Now for a stem and leaf diagram, then the median average is the classic one to calculate. So we'll do that. Um, we could calculate the mean, we could have added up everyone, so we could have done 81 plus 84 plus 72 plus 73 and so forth, but that takes a little bit of time, so it's really uh, up to you which one you want to go for. Um, but the median is a classic one for stem leaf diagrams, and the range is a classic one for these as well. Um, sometimes you could do the interquartile range, the question could actually do the interquartile range. Uh, look what happens in the middle area, so that you ignore any extremes, outliers. But uh, we'll keep it simple, the median and the ordinary range. So the median is the middle value when they're in size order. Well, the stem leaf diagram's already got the data in size order. And they're talking about 15 people. So to find the median, so to find the median position, so whereabouts the median value will be, then we do 15 plus 1 and have it. So 16, 8. So we're looking for the 8th value needed. Now this add 1 to the total frequency and have it will always tell you where the exact middle is. Um, so the 8th value is where the median is. So here we've got to be careful because as I say going this way we've got to remember we're counting up to the left. So it's going to be 58, 59, 60, 61 and so forth. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So our median is that value there. Now the check of course would be that if we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight values before it, we should have eight values after it. So the eight values after it will be 72, 73 and so forth. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven before it. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven after it. So that is the middle value. So again, it's nice if you can lay out your work with a table because we are doing a communication question. So let's try and make that communication clear. So median and range. So the median before was 77 beats and the median after 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So our median should have seven after it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the eighth value. So that's the median for the after values. So that's going to be 78. So 78. Okay. 
Right, so I've got to go back to the table because I just realised that this had 60 in front, so it's 60, 61, 64, 66, 66, 67. Or to check yourself, so that should be 67. Okay, um, then we go through the process of finding the range. So we need the maximum value. So the maximum value in this one was 84. Remember to read this carefully, go in there to, to the left to this side. So the maximum value was 84, and the minimum value was 58. So 58 and 84. So for the range here, we're going to do 84. Take away 58, uh, 84 take away 58 is 26. So the range is going to be 26. And the range for this one, um, the maximum value is 102, and the minimum value is 65. So for this side, we're going to be doing 102 take away 65, so 37. So now we've got our uh, data. We remember the question said compare. So we've done all the calculations, fairly confident that once we've done our checking that we've got the right numbers and therefore we can uh, compare. So basically we'd write some form of sentence along the lines to say um, the average heart speed increased from 67 to 78 after the test and the spread of the heartbeats after the test was wider as the range was higher. Okay, so we can say that because when we look at the data, we can see that the median average has increased. So the average heartbeat increased on 78 after the test. And the spread of the heartbeats, well, the range tells you about the spread, the distribution of the uh, data. And the range after the heartbeats was 37, showing that the heartbeats were more spread out. Um, at the beginning. So that's uh, how we would interpret a back-to-back -back diagram. Um, sometimes the example uh, will ask you to draw them. Uh, sometimes they're nice, they give you a table already. Now the working space here is to do what they call the unordered um, table. Um, so that you can do a quick sketch, uh, just go through each of these one by one and then redraw it as a ordered table. So that's the approach I'm going to take. So we look for um, the minimum value in here, uh, which looks to be 10. Uh, look for the maximum value in here, which looks to be 54. So we know that uh, we split the table up into our 10 parts, and our units part is our stem. And again, key point is we always must put a key down. So we're going to say something like 4 stroke 3 equals 43 years old. It's about 43, it's about age. So the logical uh, swimming pool. Right, so 54, okay, we'll go through them one by one. So 54, 43, 15, 16. So all we'll do is put the units part on this one. So 42, 23, 20, 18, 36, 32. 45, 10, 14, 45, 13, 46. Okay, so that's how rough workings out. That's the unordered diagram. But uh, for the final answer, we use stem leaf diagrams to demonstrate data in size order and to look at the distributions. So one, two, three, four, five. And in order then, we have a 0, uh, followed by a 3, followed by a 4, followed by a 5, a 6, an 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 0, a 3, a 2, a 6, a 2, a 3, a 5, a 5, and a 6, and then 4. 
So that would give us the three marks. Uh, we're all in size order. Uh, we've got a key done. Uh, we've checked there's the right number of numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And they said there was 16 people. So that's the stem leaf diagram uh, done there. Um, the question goes on there and it wants us to do a comparison. So it's asking us to compare the data. Now, because they've given us lists of data, um, I could draw another stem leaf diagram and they calculate median averages and that. But we already saw that in the previous question on how to do the median average comparison. So this time, as there are lists of data, uh, I'm going to look at comparing them by the mean average because I can work out the mean because I know all the data and I'm going to work out the ordinary range. So again, it's a question about comparing. So I need an average to compare and in this case it's going to be the mean average and I also need a range to compare and as I'm doing a list of numbers the easiest range is the highest value minus the lowest value and this was the swimming pool and this was the gym Again, a nice table just to kind of get a feel for what's going on. All right, so we've got to do the mean average. So that means we're going to be adding up all those numbers. So 54 plus 43 plus 15 plus 16 plus 52 plus 23 plus 20 plus 18 plus 36, plus 32, plus 45, plus 10, plus 14, plus 49, plus 13, plus 46 equals, and then divide that by 16, okay, so 29 and a half. Okay, so for the swimming data, the mean average was 29 and a half minutes, no age, sorry, years, so age. And the range was the highest value, uh, which was 54, minus the lowest value, which was 10. So 44. So the range was 44. Okay, so we've got the mean average by just adding up all these numbers and then dividing by 16. And the range, we found the highest value and the lowest value, and then we took one for each other. So I'm now going to do the same for the gym, so that we can do the comparison of uh, the ages. So we've got 18 plus uh, 19 plus 20 plus 21 plus 27 plus 29 plus 32 plus 34 equals um, plus 35 plus 36 plus 39 plus 39 plus uh, 42 plus 44 plus 45 equals. Uh, we've got to recognize there are 15 people. In my gym. So I only divide by 15. So 32. So 32 years. And the range is going to be the highest value of 45, take away the lowest value of 18. So 45, take away 18, equals 27. Okay, so 27. So basically, uh, we've got our comparisons. I mean, if this was a real exam situation for you guys, then hopefully you would do the calculations twice uh, just to check that you've made any silly errors and you're adding up and so forth. But, um, you know, do check them twice and make sure there's no silly errors going on. Um, so we've got to do a comparison. So it says compare. Um, basically, uh, we can say that the average age of the people who went through in was lower. So, average age of people who went swimming was lower. 29.5 is less than 32. Show the numbers in the argument. And we can say the ages of the people who went to the gym was less spread out, more consistent.
assistant. As the range was la twenty seven is less than forty four. Um, to sort what we mean by uh, consistency, uh, the smaller the value, then the closer together the data is, um, and therefore it's more consistent. It doesn't mean it's reliable, it just means it's more consistent. It's reliability is uh, also about how you collect the data and so forth. So that would give us the marks because we've done our calculations, we've checked them, they're accurate, and then we've done the comparisons of an age uh, through average, and we've done a comparison uh, through the use of the range. So that's stem and leaf diagrams and the kind of questions they might ask you on them and how you might use them.